We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Good evening. Welcome back to In The Khud. This is November 1, 2022. Start of a new month. Start of a new... Uh, okay, I don't know. Before anything, I have to address the fact that yesterday I missed my documentation. My, it was Monday. It was supposed to happen, but in an ordinary situation, I would consider it as an unacceptable order of operations to just miss out a documentation session that way. But the reason I kind of compensated for it is now Bruh. i have another video a 3d video that's going on to the channel and to instagram to everywhere and it is not just that we also have completed doing like implementing erindel's beginner bcs geometry notes course of course learned a ton through it and not just that we've added our own twist to it and we have a halloween video going up now <gasps> i understand that halloween was yesterday technically but let's just consider halloween as a season like christmas is a season so it just lasts for like three four days or let's say a week so it's all fine that i put it out today I have to dial things a little behind see there are 31st 30th 30th was sunday right i woke up at seven took snowy down and then i did seven episodes this is all dad's work okay 14 25 starting second lot 15 35 did 10 episodes then 15 35 7 19 second lot did 10 episodes quite a few i think 27 i can see documented here so you can see sunday was primarily a dad's work day if i go to yesterday monday i don't think i have documented anything because okay on sunday i had started doing this right going through the course and then making notes while i go through it like do it over as he is explaining and step by step try to document it so i done these things scattering collection like grass and plants and stuff that's what was happening on sunday sunday's morning session then came yesterday monday yesterday morning i did one followed along one video which was adding wind through the grass normally resumed the full-time job work post waking up from my nap but it was during the day at some point i was just probably scrolling through my instagram feed not a good habit not prescribing it but i was doing it and i was watching a lot of these uh, 3d artists that i follow on instagram making a lot of halloween creatives and that that just like struck me that this course that he explains the video that he makes in this course the glade scene is kind of like a spooky halloween scene so why can't i just tweak it a little bit and make it like a thing and i would also get to do the course and so that's what i did yesterday i was under this pressure that oh my god yes yesterday like today it is halloween so i have to put it by the end of the day Bruh. so i went full speed ahead but there were a few things that were blocking me firstly i had to follow along and watch the entire course which took time a significant amount of time but a few important things that were bothering me is one this finally figured the fog not showing a problem need to have an hdri outside the cube box in the magnum ice cream blender render i thought that the reason why the fog is not showing up even after adding the principal bsdf in the shader is because that it's not a cube or it was plain that was extruded there's nothing of that sort as long as the normals are pointing in the correct direction that shader should work but for that shader sh to work there has to be an hdri in the environment and that makes logical sense because you're taking a box and you just put encasing everything like your entire scene within that box and if there is nothing to illumine that box itself because all your lights are inside the scene right the box is covering everything if there was like an actual light outside the box it would work but the easiest way to do that is just add an hdri and then everything is evenly lit and one thing i also discovered is that the strength of that hdri can also be zero as long as it's there in your world shader the fog thing should work fine and then tweaking the density and everything that was one big thing learned second big thing is yesterday evening when i was trying to move along the scene i was having a very tough time because there were like ninety-five thousand faces or something yeah currently you see that our scene oh god this activate windows go away currently our scene has like eleven thousand nine fifty five faces but yesterday evening was showing ninety four thousand faces and some weird kind of objects like so many objects and stuff objects is still one out of twenty eight thousand six forty if i'm not wrong yeah but the vertices and basically the volume and everything was so high and i was like man geometry nodes is flawed because the entire purpose of using geometry nodes was that i want it to be you coming up as a modifier and everything has to be instances and that's proceduralism and yeah i was pretty bummed looking at that but then today morning i realized that and the reason the way i concluded that that's not the case is because i downloaded erindel's final video project the one he completes after the course is done and then i saw that project had like 3000 4000 word faces but i was at around 95000 faces so what i did is i tried using that project to make my pumpkin thing and when i brought in these pumpkins these pumpkins were the ones that were adding so much of geometry which is like oh, blew my mind so i just removed the extra two pumpkins and kept one and instance that along and even this one pumpkin i quad remeshed it to like around thousand vertices or so thousand faces or so because it's 
anyway not going to be so visible for it to have so many unnecessary details is just that the the model i got from cg trader had just way too many vertices on it which is not recommended like you shouldn't have that model like that but that's okay that's part of my job to figure out how to make sure that the system and the scene is working fine so that was one big lesson learned from this project other than that i want to just take this time to actually show you how the scene is set up so then that adds a little more context to this now this is the entire geometry nodes tree set up here okay we start with obviously the plane okay i'm going to shift all this plane and I also added these two trees in the front because I was going to shut fog for a minute. Yeah, I just added these two trees in the front because I want to add that foreground element as you can see in the video as well. Okay, we start with this ground. We add some mesh displacement to it using this simple setup. Okay, so now this mesh has displacement. This is all happening inside geometry nodes. Next thing we do is we scatter plants onto the mesh. Okay. So now this has been done. Also, additionally, what we do is we animate this. So we animate noise. There's a lot of things that happens here. And I'm not going to go like every single thing because the video is already closed, closing to 10 minutes. Then we scale by proximity. What this basically means is, let me just do one thing. Let me just get to the final part so that everything is in. Scale by proximity, if I go to my camera, you will see that the, that the places where these, so in the original course, instead of pumpkins, there are stones here tombstones or whatever wherever these are you see the grasses are less so if i was to take uh, let me give you a very live example of how powerful this structure is of geometry nodes if i was to take these pumpkins right where are the instances of these pumpkins instance lambs instance birds i think i had colored it a different yep orange instance pumpkins so there is i think there's a transform node area how do i see yep if I was to move this in X or in whichever direction, you see that wherever these pumpkins are around that part, there will be less grass. OK, and you will see that wherever these trees are, sorry, not this one, the ones behind, wherever these trees are around that part, there will be more grass. That's what we had done through these set of node nodes here scale by proximity and one more thing we've done is we've marked vertices on the mesh itself so if i go into weight paint mode you cannot see it here mm, for that i'll have to shift all this okay now if i was to go into weight paint mode you see that this is entirely blue which means a weight of zero and red means a weight of one so i needed wherever this is like a vertex group right called trees and wherever the weight is one we're gonna have that distribution of trees there so that's that little logic here quickly jump back to the final thing and that's how we're distributing this again i added these two then after that uh, if you see that these birds they're moving along a loop so movement along a spine is done through these set of nodes here object and for resample curve the count here if i increase the count it's going to increase the number of birds here that you see right increasing the count is going to increase the number of birds and also depends on this random value random seed here and then we're animating this using scene time and index and we're doing modulo because we want to make sure that throughout the range like the range or resolution basically how many frames our animation is playing so 200 frames we're dividing that in a modulo and that makes sure makes sure that after frame 0 to 199 we don't have frame 200 but we go back to frame 0 and that's how we get that seamless looping animation without like jumps at the end or the beginning that i anyways just figure out again inside after effects i will quickly show you what i've finally come up with okay we do that movement along the spine and then we instance lamps onto those objects like those birds are moving around also have lights on them because that's actually an emission shader but we want to have dynamic lights in the system because overall this is the scene is very dark so we want to have like some lights coming from here and there and there's this one little section here i think it is yeah align euler to vector you see those billboards here these billboards are basically these skulls that I, I again I just came up with it. Is it a rendered material is a little easier to see, but you can't really see the billboards, right? So these billboards that you see, these skulls. In in the course, he just gives a plane and then on that it has a black some some form of emission thing on it. But I wanted to have like a different thing, so there's a skull. For for that I had to tweak the shape of the plane itself to 
cover the silhouette of the skull and then I UV unwrapped that and made sure that this is fitting right on that texture and now as they are moving a line oiler to vector basically makes sure that this billboard even if the bird is moving in that direction along the tangent of the curve the billboard is always facing the camera because uh, that's nice Bruh. instancing birds okay and then we join all the geometry and voila so of course a ton learned through this particular course and i would highly highly recommend for anyone who's like even a little bit interested in learning more geometry in order to just take this course off of canopygames.com slash just search for Arendelle there or geometry nodes and you will get this course it's called bcs beginners geometry nodes and now i will take the privilege of showing you how the final thing is looking so mute everything here because i don't want anything playing i want to even mute my system so this right now is like this okay it's there's the sound effects and everything this little thing you see here the lightning coming in this i have done through saber inside after effects i can actually even show you right now because all the things just seem to be open so you you see these two solid layers i can't go about explaining how saber works it's gonna be too long but it's it's similar to what i had done in the moving meditations thing except for the fact that i had done that right inside blender but here i had to like fake that depth through masks and everything inside after effects it gives like a pretty cool thing and for the distortion i've just used animation composers glitch because that's like a very uh handy thing to use all the time and then there's text at the top inspiration and Dell bcs geometry notes now i had to re-render okay one more important thing that i learned through this personal this personal project is rendering even an ev when you're trying to render something uh, using geometry nodes even though they are instances like in this case it's particularly different because it's not just instances there are these lights which are moving along with the birds and there are billboards and uh, th th and there's fog volumetric so there's a lot that i've added but what would happen is every time that i would hit render blender would just uh, freeze at let's say frame number four <coughs> now the thing is even here it would freeze and that render window was not responding only Bruh. the thing you need to know here is that even if it looks like it has frozen if you see your task manager gpu will be at 100 percent. that's why blender is so beautiful <coughs> cpu will be around 40 50 percent but as long as that is happening you need to be assured of the fact that the render is happening you just can't see it on the timeline neither on the render window so what will happen is after like 5 10 or 15 minutes you will see that the timeline indicator has just jumped to frame number 45 or 50 so that was one important thing to learn don't like panic and stop because if you try doing something inside blender while it is rendering it just goes not responding especially with a scene that's i won't say it's very complicated but it's to, to the things that i'm accustomed to doing in blender it is fairly complicated and another thing is when you do hit render make sure the entire timeline is in like you can is visible so that once it's once it's here and then you hit render because blender just freezes you cannot see where the progress is even after those jumps after like 10 15 minutes i've been listening to uh, a lot of daily stoic from ryan holiday and research and like telling everyone about stoicism and marcus aurelius meditations and again i came across this one video calisthenics movement one of my favorite channels we are what we repeatedly do excellence then is not an act but a habit and like recently i've been trying to process this so much that all this that i do like full-time job and dad's work and then on the third pillar trying hard to make content and learn through all these courses and in the moment it feels like it's all this effort that i'm putting in but it's just about habit it's just about system that's why just showing up has been so powerful in my life in the past one year specifically is like everything that i'm doing in 3d right now like even in this project itself you'll see that something as complicated as making 3d animations is not an isolated process you know once you are into a project you will have to keep going to shading so you need to know about the shade editor you have to go into uv editing in the magnum ice cream we did so much with texture painting and sculpting and modeling you need to know how to do basic modeling basic animation understanding the nla and graph editor and adding those noise modifiers. there's so much that goes into 3d so i'm just so glad that i've been somehow able to stick to these like tiny simple little progresses 
every single day even if it is just waking up in the morning session and opening a blender that is all that i've done it still counts and this has i can like now start to see how it is materializing this idea that every drop makes up the ocean on that very beautiful very inspiring note i would like to end today's documentation i probably hit 20 minutes it's gonna take me a while to edit it but i'm gonna make sure that i have rushed through this edit and uploaded in 20 minutes because i have to leave for the gym by eight o'clock workouts have been going amazing thank you so much for being in the cut i will catch you tomorrow Peace.